Hi, this is Hitchhiker's Guide to Humanity, and I am your host, Chris Copeland. I'm here with my co-host, Ronnie. She is the human for Mako the Alien, and I am the human for Crystal the Alien. Today we are talking about religion in Africa. And if you just listened to our last segment, or if you listened to it yesterday, uh, thank you for joining us today, because we're going to delve into um, what uh, religion looks like um, today in Africa. And we ended our last dis discussion with uh, Ronnie bringing up the point um, that churches, Christian churches today in Africa, are started as businesses, as money-making businesses um, uh, for, for people to have income after they have finished their schooling. And I also see this um, very much so in, in America as well. There are, you know, you, you cannot walk, walk down a block without seeing at least one church uh, in most small towns in America. And um, there are just more and more being popped up every day. Um, and, and they are ran very much like businesses. Um, and, and it's not just the small churches either. One thing that was incredibly um, disconcerting to me, um, in fact, made me pretty angry, was that I, I uh, read on the news that the um, uh, personal payroll protection uh, program that the, the government started for um, uh, small businesses to survive COVID-19, um, uh, several thousand Catholic churches were given access to that money. Um, and that's $2.4 trillion of taxpayer money uh, that's going to non-taxpaying entities in America because churches are exempt from paying taxes. So they're getting our tax dollars but not contributing to the society that that uh, everyone else is contributing to through through money. Um, and then that as a taxpayer, as a business owner, makes me incredibly angry because I'm still you know waiting on my relief package and, and they got it right away. Uh, along with huge corporations in America, um, business uh, or churches in America are ran as a business, um, non-taxpaying businesses, very much like Amazon, who can also uh, not pay taxes in America. Um, and yeah, I think as a small business owner, that that makes me pretty angry. Um, so, uh, Ronnie, what, go ahead and, and talk more about what that's like in, in Africa. What do you see going on in the landscape in Kenya with religion today? Religion today has, has Christianity today has just become something else, especially uh, in Kenya. People run them like they're businesses. Uh, people, you see a lot of uh, people are not into it. Most, most of these people are not into it to to help the less fortunate. That is just my personal belief and something that I am extremely against. Uh, I'd, I, when I go to, when I, I'd, I'm not really a, a big, I've not gone to church in a while, but I'd rather go to a children's home and give and do some shopping with the little money that I have and give to them, to a less fortunate person directly, than give it to a church. That is how how strongly I I, I am against these church uh, people. In as much as we are told to give, we call it sadaka in in Kenya to give sadaka to the church. That it 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 shows how much you are appreciative of God. But the truth uh, is, when you trace the way this money is used, it's not mostly used to help less fortunate people in the community. And that is, that I think that is what Christianity needs to be about, helping people who are less fortunate. You find most of it going into the pockets of the church leaders. They are living extremely, extremely lavish lives when their, their, their followers or their congregations are, are living in poverty or the people, the communities around them are dying of hunger and living in poverty when they are driving 10 huge cars. You wonder what somebody wants to do with three, four, five huge cars. What are you, and you're a pastor to make that, to make matters worse. You're identifying yourself as a pastor, as somebody who speaks for Christ and they are uh, people around you. People, I, I, me, I, I personally believe that when you take up the mantle of being somebody who speaks for Christ, who is like a, 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 a big follower of the teachings of, of God or of uh, Jesus, Jesus' teachings and the teachings of the Bible, which speak to helping uh, people in your communities, then why is it that you're, and, and, and about 
uh, non-earthly riches, not having a lot of riches on, on earth, then why not share out this wealth that you get? You, of course, there's, you need what you can, what you need to sustain you. But I can, I can, I can, if you can, if you look at most of these prominent pastors in Kenya, they live extremely lavish lives that they don't need and their congregation and their communities around them live extreme, uh, extremely uh, poor mm, lives. People are hungry, not having anything to eat, homelessness. So that is one, one bit of Christianity in these modern times that, that uh, really uh, is so disappointing to me as an individual. Maybe other people out there have different uh, opinions on this and that the pastors also need to take care of themselves. They also need to. But me, as uh, if I today wake up and say that I am a humanitarian and I am preaching the word of Christ and following his teachings, you will not find me somewhere with uh, uh, 10 big luxury vehicles, a very huge house and uh, 10 bodyguards for what? And people are dying of hunger. People are starving. People are homeless all over the the people who are extremely less fortunate than you are are uh, are starting up uh, shelters and children's homes to help these kids that they're, they're in Kenya they there are street kids all over everywhere in town and you you walk around and you find a street kid begging you for money uh, an 11 year old a 10 year old person a 10 year old child while you who's supposed to be to be to be protecting and to be helping such you are living that kind of a life that is one part of christianity now but that is being practiced that is the kind of christianity that is being practiced in kenya at the moment which is something that is very unfortunate that's also being practiced in america in fact i i'm uh, what immediately comes to mind is, um, unfortunately, someone who shares the same last name as me, and from what I've heard from other family members, is actually distantly related to me. Um, a, a pastor out of Dallas, um, whose first name I won't give, but based on the last name, you guys can check him out yourself and, and see some of the, the shady things he has done. Um, he ha he's one of those televangelists that go on TV and, and tell people if they'll just send seed money of faith uh, donations to him, then, then they will be cured of all these ailments. They'll get protection from COVID even was one of his recent scams. Um, and he's used these funds to buy himself a mansion in Dallas and including a jet for Jesus, which he uses for personal travel and not actually for any church related business. Um, hopefully, uh, those in, the government will start investigating him because it's pretty obvious he's committed some crimes. Um, anyone who, who can look at that situation and go, wait, okay, so this guy is taking money from elderly senior citizens living on social security and telling them if they will just send that money to him, then he will make sure that they, you know, get cured of whatever ailments they have or that they will receive protection from coronavirus or that God will bless them and multiply their money a thousand fold, none of which is true. Um, people keep sending him money and their lives never actually change. In fact, they continue to get poorer and poorer while he gets richer and richer. Um, you know, spending money on lavish vacations and trips around the world. And um, he's, he's obviously a criminal. We'll just call it what it is. He is a criminal. Um, and he is not, he is by no means the only one doing that. There are thousands of those kinds of pastors all over America that create these mega churches and advertise on television and demand that the elderly send them money or, you know, or they will face the wrath of God. And if they do send them money, then they won't face the wrath of God and they'll receive rich blessings, all of which is uh, utter horse crap. Um, and it's quite damaging to people. And, and these people that, that believe it are usually lower educated and um, mm -hmm. easily swayed to, to religion. Um, and it's tragic seeing that because, you know, in the same uh, city that he lives in, in Dallas, there's thousands of people that are uh, living in poverty and um some and lots of homeless people and and yet uh you know he this christian 
um, spends all this money on mansions and, and luxury vehicles and a plane that he does not actually need um, and does no good for anyone else. So, you know, that's a, a pretty tragic situation all over America. Um, I, I will tell you, since I've been in Europe, I have not seen any kind of thing like that on television. I've not seen um, any kind of churches that are huge mega churches here. Um, in fact, most of our churches are turned into museums here. Um, in Europe, there is this, at least in Western Europe, in, in the, I, I won't say the same for Eastern Europe, it is still very old school and traditional there. But um, in lots, uh, lots of parts of Western Europe, um, religion is being left behind. People may still, you know, con consider themselves Christian um, and, and practice that faith in their daily lives, but they don't regularly attend church and, and donate lots of money to their churches. Um, they focus way more on providing people with education and health care, which is, which is, you know, much more needed uh, than, than building big churches. Um, they, I think they kind of realized that once they built all these big churches here and now that they're standing empty, in fact, I'm living in a church right now that's being used for, um, housing people, um, it, cheaply because it's, it's incredibly cheap rent in this building. And, uh, I think that's a much better use of all these empty buildings is to, to make sure people have a place to live, especially when we're under such a housing crisis here. Um, uh, and I, I'm, I'm hoping that as, as humanity evolves um, around the world and as um, Western Europe kind of becomes this, this beacon for, for how to do things right, how to make sure your people are taken care of first, uh, that other countries will follow suit. Um, do you see that as something that is potential for Kenya or do you think it will continue going to these extremes of lavish wealth caused by religion? while everyone else is left out. I think that for now, this is the trend that's coming up and for the next decades, this is what's going to keep happening and keep, because uh, most of these young people see that uh, so and so, you know, you see the way you see a, biz a big business person and you identify with them, you want to be like them. You want to achieve what they have achieved. So most of this upcoming generation also sees Oh, so and so has made it very big in being a pastor. He's living this kind of life in opening a church and being a pastor. So that is uh, why most of these small small churches have started coming up. And for the, I think for the next uh, good part of the next uh, foreseeable future, this is what's going still going to be happening and still going to to ha to happen. But in as much as there's that that uh, negative part of uh, the churches nowadays and Christianity nowadays, there's also there are also some good good people who just uh, I told you some time back that my sister is uh, sick, has been sick for some time, and in the course of our finding uh, treatment for her, uh, both through modern medicine and just praying and. So we've come across some of these uh, people who who say that I can treat I can treat her and they are demanding money. But also in the course of that, you come across these really uh, good Christians and good pastors who just pray for you and just offer you help because that is and don't don't ask for anything in return. Don't ask for money in return. They just tell you that this is why I'm here. This is why uh this is what i do i speak for christ, i speak for christ or i am inspired to speak for christ and that is everything that i want to do if you have money that you want to give me don't give it to me help that help i want you to use that money to help an unfortunate uh, somebody who's in an unfortunate uh, circumstance that is his payment so there are those good christians there are those good churches which which uh, do not uh, like put themselves in the, the business side of it, but in helping people. So I think that there's need to popularize that kind of practice instead of this other one, which is highlighted so much in televisions, in the, 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 these big churches. That, so that is, that is what, what people identify with because that is what is shown a lot on, on, on the media, in, in televisions, in, on the internet. That is what is popularized. But this other noble uh, Christian practice issues needs to be shown on, on TVs and they needs to be highlighted so that 
these young people or this upcoming generation can identify with this side of Christianity and help people move towards this uh, side. But for now, because this is what is being shown, this is what is being popularized. Every, every, every this generation that is coming up wants to also succeed, and they see that this is because people, people, uh, uh, Africans have this need of identifying the higher being. So so many people, because uh, life here uh, for so many people is tough, especially during this, this, these times and just even even during normal times, uh, there are so many people who are going through extremely hard, hard situations. So they need to believe in something. To believe to, they need to believe in that higher power. So people pray on this need for belief. So there's the, let me say the market, is there for them they they have seen something that they can aspire to and the marketing quotes is also there uh, for them so for the next uh, uh, a few like say even decades this is something that is still going to be happening but it's something that seriously 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 needs to change and I do want to highlight that, you know, I have actually come across um, a, a, a few churches in America that I would say do amazing work in their communities. One I'm thinking of in um, uh, Durant, Oklahoma, where I lived, uh, was this amazing little church um, who gave out food to the homeless and who had after school kind of programs for kids uh, so that they wouldn't have to run the streets or be at home without parents because their parents had to work so much. Um, they offered youth programs. My own daughter attended that church for a little while. And, um, uh, and, and that those kinds of churches um, do give a lot to those communities and they don't uh, the, those pastors there don't drive fancy cars. They live in normal size houses, usually small houses paid for by the church. Um, and they, they live on very little income and uh, that income is decided by a church council as a whole. So everyone there knows what they're making. Um, and I, I'm thinking of another church that uh, a friend of mine, um, uh, her husband and, and she run in uh, uh, Griffin, Georgia. And um, they are the most generous people I have ever met. Um, and I've never actually met her in person, but I've known her for almost a decade uh, through, through transcription work. She runs a transcription company. And um, she and her husband have opened their homes to foster children. Um, uh, they've adopted a few of those foster children themselves. Um, she is working from like 5 a.m. in the morning until after midnight doing things for other people, doing good in her community. And her husband is the exact same way. Uh, and they do this while, while managing a household of all these children running through that need good homes. And, um, and they don't make a lot of money through their church. In fact, they rely mostly on her income through transcription because he, he makes so little money uh, through, through being a pastor. And I highly respect people who, who do that, um, regardless of whatever personal differences we have in our religious or, or political beliefs. Um, I, she is a, a, a woman who has uh, taught me a lot about generosity and kindness of spirit. Um, and I do absolutely agree with you that those people need to be highlighted way more than these mega churches that are receiving, you know, millions of dollars a year and not even being taxed on it. Um, so, and if I, I, I will talk to her and ask if I have her permission and I'll put a link to, to her husband's, uh, church website in the, in the comments if, if she, or in the description, if she allows that. Um, and so if anyone out there wants to, to donate to, to it, to, look, I am not a Christian. I am an atheist. And I'm saying, like, if you want to donate money to any kind of Christian cause, this would be one to do. Um, because you will know that that money is going to good causes. Um, and is, do you have any churches that you would recommend in, uh, in Nairobi that are doing really amazing work for the community? And if there are Christians listening and they want to give, um, what church should they give to? I will also source them out and uh, just put them in the description or a link to them in the next posts that we do. Awesome. That sounds great. And uh, because we definitely want to highlight those people out in the world, regardless of what their faith is, that are doing good work in the world. 
Um, that's kind of like a lot of what this podcast is about is, is highlighting the goodness in humanity. And, and while there's a lot of bad in the world, there's still definitely a lot of good in the world. Um, I do want to do one more segment, um, which we will, uh, you will, uh, hear about, t- uh, if you're listening to this as it's being released, you will hear about this one tomorrow. Uh, when we come back, we will talk about how there's a, a, a mix of, of Christianity plus tribal, um, uh, beliefs still going on and, and what that mix is like uh, in our last uh, segment for, for the coming week. Um, thank you for joining me today, Ronnie. And if you guys have any uh, comments about good churches that you support in your area, please comment. And, and it doesn't have to be a Christian church. Share whatever faith you are and share what um, program. It can even be a non-religious program. Just um, make sure we know about all those good humans out there. Um, and thank you for joining us. <laughs>